volatile. So, uh, what is the day of reckoning? Do you see it? Are we here now? Is it two years, five years, ten years? How long do we have before we have to deal with this and continue our? Yeah. When? How long we continue our wishful thinking? Is it done? Uh, the oil situation is, is uh, not as simple as as we might think. It's not. A, first of all, it's not about running out of oil. Uh, it's largely about the failure of complex systems that depend on a lot of energy and the mutually reinforcing instabilities that, that, that they will cause for each other. Uh, it's also about uh, uh, strange dynamic relationships that we are going to see between capital, i.e. money, and the ability to get more oil. You know, one of the things that's going on in the wishful thinking department in the USA right now is the idea that we're going to get a hundred years worth of shale gas and shale oil, okay? Well, um, that whole project, by the way, depends on massive amounts of capital being available. Because in order Can to... Can we just print it? QE14. QE15. You, no. you, 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 you could put in a request for Tinkerbell to come back and maybe... China will keep buying our treasury bonds. Yeah, the way, well, you know, no, the, way no, the world looks to China thinking. looks very different than it looks to us. China thinks everything's going to grow and everything's going to get better and we are having trouble thinking that way in, in the states but uh, the reality is that we don't know how much oil there is because a pretty good idea. governments kind of control the information and oil companies control the information so they kind of let the information out that they think we should know and how much supply we we can actually you know, what the supplies also fluctuates with what we're willing to pay. In other words, a lot of oil resources live in places that are fantastically expensive to exploit. So that plays into what Jim is saying. But if we want it bad enough and we're willing to pay the price, they are ready. They're ready to go into the Arctic Sea. You know, they're ready for all these places. So that actually makes the oil supply quite elastic. Now, if global warming effects hit us harder and faster than we think, then suddenly we're going to slam on the brakes and say, what do we do? How do we get out of this as fast as possible? I think the way we do become, you know, where the catastrophes, you know, start coming at us one after another is to kind of ignore what's going on, which is unfortunately afflicting the United States. And so then we become, vict we become victims. Uh, New Orleans was not prepared for Katrina, so New Orleans became a victim. Uh, the you know, they have wildfires in California and they attempt to prepare for them so California is not a victim or it's less of a victim. So not a victim. this is the kind of situation that we find ourselves in and if we just put our collective heads deep into the sand as, you know, kind of America is doing, then we become victims and we become big. I mean, there was a very strange image that of all people, General Walsh, who runs the entire Mississippi River for the Army Corps of Engineers told me, is that they opened the Morganza spillway above Baton Rouge and let the floods, I don't know panic stricken about what would happen, but he said he was, and it wasn't so bad as it turned out, it was all planned. But he said he was walking along the levees and saw all this water pouring by that they had released. And, and then he saw on the other side a farmer running as he could. He couldn't even see the farmer. All he could see was a cloud of dust because the drought in southern Louisiana, which is the same drought that afflicts Texas and New Mexico, was had been so bad that all you got was dust when you were... So this strange confluence of horrible flood and terrible drought, you know, kind of says it all about uh, what we're up against, you know, and who's preparing and who's not. And that's really going to be kind of a big, the big question to me, so that, you know, because Jim is kind of arguing out of chaos comes, you know, the desired outcomes, but, you know, New Orleans is struggling pretty badly because it's catastrophe did not re lead to renewal the way so many people hope to try and make I'm, I'm going to turn it, uh, do we have mics for people in the audience that we can be giving them? And I 